Uh, okay, so thanks so for the introduction. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, a machine perception problem that is not visual, but it's more about uh, oral per perception, which is quite of uh, under load compared to, to vision. So um, let, 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 let me start by a few observations. So uh, owing to the, uh, the recent progress in computer vision, now machine can uh, recognize objects in uh, images or and uh, can, can even caption uh, images. Speech rec recognition is almost solved, expecting some uh, difficult situations. So we can now uh, voice command some, uh, some object like Alexa or Google Home or any, uh, uh, any smartphone. Machine can understand music, so you can ask, uh, you can ask some um, personal assistant uh, something like uh, play me some uh, music from the 90s which uh, contains some guitars. And so this, this, this kind of uh, uh, machine perception problem is uh, pretty uh, advanced, but uh, actually machines still struggle in understanding everyday uh, sounds. So what I mean by everyday sound is, uh, for instance, the sound in a smart house for isolated people, so the sound occurring in a kitchen, or a sound uh, surrounding uh, a self-driving car, so the sound of a, a siren of an emergency car or, or things uh, like that. Okay, so uh, if you give a machine this kind of scene, which is uh, this kind of image, you will probably recognize that there's a lot of pedestrian, there's a pedestrian that's crossing the street, there's a bus, there's a truck, there's uh, cars, and, uh, and so on and so forth. But if you give a machine the equivalent in, uh, in audio, what would be this kind of um, Time frequency, representi time frequency representation of, uh, uh, of one minute of signal, then we struggle recognizing that actually there is a, a sound of fo a footstep in this, uh, in this image, there is sound of a car engine, there is sound of a, uh, of a truck, and uh, there is sound of, uh, of brakes. So the, the, the goal of, um, of computational sound analysis is actually to, uh, to, uh, to augment machine per perception and to go beyond vision. And, and uh, we want to make sense of ambient sounds. So, uh, so basically, we are interested in any sounds, any signal that is mostly non-speech and non-music. And so what's, what's nice about uh, this kind of sound and uh, about uh, oral perception is that uh, actually it is omnidirectional. It is robust to occlusion of and lightning compared to, uh, to, uh, to visual perception. And you can even do some far-field far field recordings, which means that uh, you can hear a sound that is uh, very far uh, if it is uh, loud enough. So there is essentially, essentially three tasks in, uh, in uh, computational ambient sound analysis. So is acoustic, acoustic sync classification. So the goal in this context is to basically to, uh, to tag uh, a sound with this location, so this sound has been recorded in a restaurant, this sound has been recorded in a busy street, and, uh, and so on. The task of sound event detection, so this is more, uh, fi it is finer, because we want to recognize in a larger stream of audio uh, some specific short time uh, uh, events, so the sound of uh, kitchen, the sound of speech, the sounds of break, or, or, or the sound of a door opening or, or um, closing. On these findings, uh, the, the ultimate goal is to uh, perform some complex analysis of, uh, of soundscape by reasoning on the presence of, uh, of uh, audio event. For instance, if you, uh, if you hear the sound of footstep or car opening and then uh, uh, closing and then the sound of engine, then you can infer probably that uh, there is someone that is, has entered the car and uh, run away. So this is the kind of task that you are we want to, to solve. So for instance, uh, uh, the, ideal, the ultimate goal will be given the signal in blue here and uh, some uh, action. Actually, uh, we want to recognize that the action happened in a kitchen. And we want to recognize some specific event, like uh, what the water tape run, uh, running and uh, filling the kettle, the, kill, the water boiling, and then someone is preparing uh, a tea. And from this, uh, collection of events and reasoning about the event, we want to infer some uh, high-level uh, action or situation. So what kind of application are, are, are these useful for? Useful for? But you can have uh, some as, uh, assistive technology for the elderly, for, for uh, checking the daily routine of the elderly, or for uh, ear impair. 
you, uh, you can use this kind of technology for uh, context awareness for mobile device or uh, robotics. So for instance, if uh, my, uh, my smartphone uh, understand that I'm talking at a conference, then it will probably have to, uh, to be in silent mode, but silent mode by itself. Uh, there is some interest for a smart car also for understanding uh, uh, the surrounding using audio, like uh, understanding the, uh, the behavior, of, behavior of emergency vehicle like uh, ambulance or trucks. Okay, and the, the other kind of application are related to monitoring, so you can monitor uh, uh, for protection, for uh, analysis of biodiversity, so you can count the number of species, uh, species of birds, for instance, in a, in a rainforest by using... Uh, uh, computational audio analysis. So what are the, uh, the, the difficulty of uh, computational audio analysis? Actually, it, uh, the thing is that we have a lot of sound and, uh, added, uh, and compared to speech and to music, uh, we have a large number of atomic units. So, so in speech, we have like, uh, in French, we have like 50, uh, 50 phonemes and uh, in music, we have only 25 chroma, which is the basis of uh, uh, of the audio, but in, uh, in ambient sounds, there's a large number of uh, atomic units, and you have different types of, uh, of sounds. We have short, uh, strong, long sound. We have very short one, but, uh, but quiet. And even in a signal that contain the same similar semantic inform uh, information, like uh, dog barking, we can have a lot of acoustic diversity. In addition, we have some problems related to reverberation, overlapping of, of sound, and uh, uh, things like that. OK, so let me uh, uh, present the, 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 the strategy art of the, uh, of the domain now. Actually, there is very few work on this, uh, on this topic uh, before uh, 2013, actually, because there is very few data sets and very small data sets. So because of this uh, uh, lack of uh, data sets, there is uh, Mostly people has tried to work on handcraft a feature for uh, solving uh, uh, for s solving the classification problem. And in uh, 2013, there was, a f there was a first challenge on uh, uh, on this uh, kind of research. But again, in this case, we have only very small uh, training set with about 100 of example. So in this example, for instance, this challenge, uh, the goal was to recognize. Uh, some location of a recording, like in busy street, a restaurant, park, and supermarket, uh, and uh, problem, like the, uh, problem like that. So progress in uh, acoustic scene classification has been made because actually there is a more and more data set, so there's a larger one, even though they still not reach uh, uh, the standard of, uh, of uh, visual data set like ImageNet. And uh, we, we have co uh, contributed to the, to the community by releasing uh, a data set, which is probably the largest one in uh, Augustine scene classification uh, at, the present, uh, at the present time, which is the DTS1 data set. But because uh, there are still very few uh, examples uh, and data set for learning model for this problem, actually, uh, people work on uh, feature engineering, and few have been uh, trying to... Uh, to, uh, to do representation learning before uh, this year, uh, this year challenge. So most work uh, start by trying to recognize uh, the acoustic classification based on uh, time frequency representation like uh, those in those uh, images. So for instance, uh, one of the solution for that are going to be presented in November uh, on, the, on this problem for the DK's competition of uh, this year as actually is kind of a, a classical approach um, using uh, deep learning and convolution on the neural network. So it's not exactly end-to-end -end because we have the uh, audio input, we have some kind of preprocessing about the audio input because with, uh, which computes so you use the left-right channel, compute the difference and uh, uh, the sum of uh, the stereo and uh, another uh, extraction of uh, sounds that uh, extract harmonic and uh, percussive sound. So based on uh, this preprocessing, we then have another uh, spectrogram. And based on this spectrogram, you can do the usual stuff, which is consistent in using a convolutional net for learning, for, uh, learning the model. 
So this works uh, pretty nicely, but actually, we, 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 if we look in, into uh, more detail, uh, there is uh, kind of uh, a problem, because in the, in the left figure, if we plot the feature extract from the convolutional network on the training set, and we plot uh, above them the feature extractor for the test set, actually, we can see that uh, the two distribution does not match, which means that actually uh, we have either a problem of uh, uh, lack of uh, capturing some invariance in the, in the audio stream, or we have a domain adaptation problem. In addition, we have also a problem of uh, overfitting. So, uh, so in the left panel, I have plotted all the results of the competitor of the this year challenge, and uh, we have the performance on the validation uh, uh, test against uh, the, the test per performance. So we can see that uh, if you have to choose one model uh, uh, among all the models proposed by the by the competitor, we will achieve we will pick the best one, which achieved 90, 95 percent. But this will not 95 percent of recognition, but will we, it will perform po very poorly on the on the test set. So there is kind of uh, still difficulty that uh, need to be addressed for uh, for making progress, and I think that. Uh, uh, the, we need still for a larger training example with more diversity and better algorithm for uh, extracting invariants with few examples. This, this, this is a state of the art on, uh, on acoustic scene classification. If we go on the state of the art on sound event de detection, so let me remember what is, what is this about. So, a given uh, audio signal and the time frequency representation, for instance, the goal is to identify and localize a sound event in your audio, audio stream. So, for instance, this is a, uh, an audio stream captured in a busy street. So we have speech localized in, uh, on time, some uh, engine car, some bus, some full stop, and so on. So this is uh, uh, our goal. And for this uh, kind of problem, actually, we have a, a better data set that has been released. And this is called audio set. So it's a, it's a kind of image net for the sound event detection. And it has been released by Google in April. Actually, we have now 2 million of 10-second uh, clips that, have been, that has been annotated, and uh, annotated with uh, more than uh, 600 of class. So these uh, clips come from uh, YouTube video, and, uh, the, uh, and uh, each 10-second uh, class have been, some 10-second class have been labeled. So on the, on the bottom, we have some example of uh, a sound made by a human when running or when walking. And on the right, we have some uh, uh, animal sound like bees or, or frogs. So the, this is very nice, but there is a high challenge on, on this data set because it is only weakly annotated. So we just have the information that in some 10 second clips, there is a, a, a bee, there is a frog that uh, um, the sound of a frog or the sound of a running. And in addition, it is highly imbalanced, which means that actually we have in, in the 2 million clips, there are more than 1 million that have the uh, tag music that is labeled as music, but only uh, 100, more than uh, 100 for uh, sound of uh, someone uh, using a toothbrush. So for the uh, for the decades challenge of this year, actually we have uh, organ organized or extracted a, sub uh, a subtext from some audio set which is uh, focused towards uh, oral perception for a smart vehicle. So we wanted to recognize some warning sound like uh, train horn, hair horn, or truck horn, like and siren, and vehicle sound like bicycle, skateboard, car, bus, and so on and so forth. So we have uh, again here we have a lot of diversity. Which means that uh, we have uh, the strong siren, for instance, on the um, of ambulance or uh, um, a fireman uh, truck, and we have a uh, quiet sound of a uh, water board uh, as example. So it's kind of uh, difficult to uh, to handle the diversity. So again, uh, I can pre I present here an example of solution with uh, each uh, still again based on uh, uh, on. Classical uh, convolutional network architecture, which Convnet and Max Pooling and Batch Norm and uh, and Lee et al. are proposed actually uh, to uh, to analyze the signal in a global way by looking at the at the full signal and then to look at uh, once also to look at one segment uh, of signal. So we have a global approach and a, a local approach that goes through the through the Convnet. So we have a two bunch of uh, outputs and this the outputs are then combined for. Uh, for predicting the presence of uh, a label, so the presence of, a, of car or bus in the clip, but also at which time these sounds are occurring. 
So this is also again pretty nice, but the things that is, there are still things uh, missing about how the weak label are used in the, in the model, and there is no temporal dependency on the uh, on the segment that is uh, taken into account. Okay. So the nice thing about uh, this about challenge is that you can compare the uh, different model, but uh, the the thing is that they are only trained on uh, the the challenge the data set provided by the by the challenge. But actually, you can leverage from over uh, over data for uh, for learning audio feature for uh, oral perception. For instance, uh, you can uh, use vision, the advanced medium vision, for uh, trying to learn some uh, uh, audio feature. So basically, uh, in this work of uh, Aitara et al. that's been uh, SoundNet, the idea is to uh, use unlabeled video and set of your art visual recognition for learning audio feature. This is a kind of uh, teacher-student model in which the vision network actually is used as a teacher for the for the audio ne network. So the principal idea is that actually sound and video are synchronized, which means that if you uh, see a, a car in a video passing by, then you probably hear you should probably hear uh, the sound of an engine. So basically, uh, given uh, a, a video, you feed an image to uh, the visual recognition network. So, for instance, a, a, a network trained on ImageNet or on, plas, uh, on places, and, and then these networks give you some probability of presence of objects in, this, in these images, and the audio um, network learn to match the probability distribution of the classes uh, of the audio on the, on the video. So basically, uh, you don't have label, but you use another uh, model that's based on, uh, on a video for, uh, for providing some uh, fake label. And if you look at the, the detail of the, what is learned by the model, actually things are pretty interesting because at the, at the low level of the, of the audio network, you get, you get some uh, filter like Gabor, uh, Gabor like filter with a different frequency. And if you look at the high level unit of the deep network, actually this unit has uh, some uh, semantic meaning actually because there is some, some unit that reacted to baby talk, to bubble sound, or to chinging and, uh, and bird chips. Again, so this kind of uh, feature, this kind of feature actually works pretty well on some uh, on some audio problem classification. And another recent recent work that is going to be uh, presented uh, at the end of the month in ICCV is uh, again use this idea that video and, and the audio events co-occur, which means that if your uh, speech and moving lips are uh, co-occur, if you see a finger moving and guitar sounds, and uh, they should uh, occur at the same time, car passing and engine. And basically, using this idea, you can learn uh, audio networks and the uh, vision network by trying to predict the correspondence between audio and video. So for instance, in this image, you feed the network the image of uh, someone playing a violin and, some, and the sound of the violin, and you have a vision network and the audio networks, and the goal of the network is to uh, predict whether the two, uh, the, the image and the, the sound correspond. So, yeah, so this is kind of a positive label, and the negative label would be get have this image of someone playing violin and pick a random sound of uh, 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 on another clip. So again, this works uh, pretty well, and if we look at the, the feature we obtain in the in the audio network, again we have some semantic uh, they are semantically relevant. So uh, some unit react pretty well with to uh, finger picking with sound of the guitar or someone playing bass guitar or, or playing saxophone. And this is again uh, achieved the state of the art on the uh, on the domain we are interested in, which is uh, uh, audio analysis. Okay, so let me conclude by a, a, a snapshot of the of the domain. So this is kind of a domain that is still very hard. So there's again a lot of progress to be made for reaching a performance similar to vision. We need larger data set uh, and eventually annotated, we need still better arguments for transformal learning and for uh, learning invariances. So if you want to, to, to join, if there is data set, there is a TensorFlow, a PyTorch, you are welcome. Thanks a lot for the attention.